when King Asa took over from his father after his death, King Asa realized he was a God-fearing man and he was doing the righteous thing and he was doing the good things. He removed all the Asherahs, all the foreign gods, he removed everything. And they asked the Judah to follow the Lord our God. That was the rightful thing that Asa did. So Asa did the rightful thing and because God was pleased with uh, Asa, he was very pleased with Asa for what he did because firstly he removed everything that was an abomination to God. God wasn't too happy with that. And so what he did was he removed everything. The next thing was that he was a righteous man. Friends, to be righteous is not so easy. In Matthew chapter 5, all right, the beauty of the servant you can find. You don't have to read it, I'll just read it to you. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 tells her, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they shall be satisfied. Doing the righteous thing, again, again from all the wrongs, and doing the righteous thing, and here you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied, says the word. And so here, Asa did the right thing. He did everything so right and God was pleased with him and God blessed him. What happened? You'll find that because of his what he did with right and which it was also the good thing before the Lord, what the Lord blessed him so much. What was the blessing? Now keep in your fingers in Second Chronicles, sorry. Chapter 14. Second Chronicles chapter 14. We see the blessings of God upon uh, Asa for his righteousness. And for what he's doing good. Okay, I read to you, verse 7. And he said to Judah, Let us all build the cities around them with walls and towers and gates and bars, and the land still ours, because we have sought the Lord our God, for he has sought him, and he has given a rest on every side. So they built and prospered. Can you see the result of being righteousness and doing good in the sight of God? God gave a rest and also peace. And also they prosper. Prosperity not only in terms of finances. Uh, prosperity in terms of everything in a life that is contained of. And so we see here the blessings was given because Asa's virtue that he did right before God. He did the right things before God. He did the good things before the sight of God. And he was a righteous man in every aspect. Righteousness is important. In our Christian walk in God, you want to be blessed. Okay, so that's the history goes. Huh? So what everything was fine sailing, everything was good. And you know Satan. This Mr. Satan will never like his children to be blessed. He never liked his children to be peaceful. He never liked his children to be, you know, enjoying the blessings of God. He always wants to come and nudge. He always wants to put his nose into our life and he goes and asks permission from God he said yes you have blessed Asa so much just like Job you have blessed Job so much you just hand over to me he will curse you and die and likewise we see King Asa while he was doing good and there was peace there was prosperity they were building cities they were doing all good but we see the devil didn't like it okay the devil didn't like it. What happened? That's what we're going to see. Now let's look at verse 9 of the same chapter. Now Zerah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million men and 300 chariots and they came to Mashah. Now what happened? Everything was so peaceful and wonderful and great and looking good. And suddenly the devil didn't like it. So he raised the Ethiopians, the Kushites. He raised them. Now, if you look in verse 9, the Ethiopians were equipped to two things. They had one million infantry soldiers and they had 300 chariots in comparison to King Asa's army. Now, you look at verse 8, you will see the army of King Asa. King Asa had an army of 300,000 from Judah bearing large shields and spears 
and 280 from Benjamin bearing shields and wielding bows, and all of them are valiant warriors. So you add them together, they only had 580,000 men. In comparison to 1 million men, and you find the word has been mentioned here, chariots. Now chariots can riot, run riot, and they can just can finish everybody on the battlefield because with the with the shield, the chariots are well shielded with the horses in front, all right, and they can able to destroy the enemy with and they have three hundred chariots. This is like tank in our days, huh? you know, the army tanks. You two tanks is sufficient to destroy a battlefield. <coughs> they are that strong, and so what happened? You find. Everything that was nice and peaceful and wonderful and everything was all like suddenly you find the enemy attacks. Asa began to feel fearful. And so he went into a three level of prayer, my friend, and that's what I want to emphasize today. You know, when we everything is fine sailing, everything is wonderful and good, and suddenly you get an attack. The devil attacks anything, <coughs> everything possible. Huh? Now, we will see the three level of prayer that he mounted. Okay, let's look at verse 11. Verse 11, we see the three level of prayer that he prayed. Okay. Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one besides you to help in the battle between the powerful and those who have no strength. So help us, O Lord, our God. For we trust in you, and in your name have come against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let not men prevail against you. Alright, in this verse, you will find three level of prayer that he prayed, which can be a lesson for us. Okay? What was the first one? Now the first one, he was reaching out to God. Okay, reaching out to God. Look at verse 11 now. He called. Right? He called to the Lord God. He was reaching out to God. When he knew that his army is outnumbered by his enemies. He knew he can't withstand them. He knew he can't win them. Alright? And so, in that despondency level, what you and you will do? We will run to men. Am I right? Whenever there is a struggle and problem, we run to men, we run to people, we run for solace, we find for solutions, all right? But this man is teaching us something, a vital thing that we need to learn, right? When a crisis sets into our life, what should we do? Call upon God. Come. Jeremiah 33, 3 tells us this, call to me, and I will answer you. And I will tell you what the great and mighty things which you do not know. Friends, by one call. Right? Not the line will be busy on the other side. Huh? Alright? Here you talk. One call. Call unto me. And you find the word me in 33. Three. And I will answer you. The Lord says, I may, I you know, I shall. He says, I will answer you, tell you great and mighty things. Calling upon God is so important. How many of us, when crisis sits into us, when problem sits into us, we have the mind and focus to call upon God. How many of us have really gone before the presence and throne of God and reaching out to God rather than seeking help from mere men who can nothing they can do much. Alright, so this is a lesson we learn, my friend. In crisis, it may sound stupid to some of us. Try it, my friend. Believe me. Our God is a God who listens to prayer. He listens to us and this man knew he is outnumbered and so he did not call his army generals. He did not call his army officials and they turned down and say, okay, listen, they got one million, we got five million. How shall we negate this war? He never did all that. He went straight to the Lord and he called upon God. He asked God's help. So first thing, my friend, that we need to reach out to God in your struggle. How many of us do talk to God in a very intimacy? 
state. We don't have, we thought God is somewhere high up in the sky. You know, when we pray, our prayer goes up into the sky and beyond the skies. And you know, my friend, he's right next to us. He hears us. He's not too busy for us. All right, so reaching out. This is the first thing Asa did. Now the second thing, all right, the second level of prayer. Look at verse 11 again. All right, he using the word, please help us. Please help us. He expressed his total helplessness. All right, he expressed to God, God, I am helplessness. I am totally helplessness. I, I can't, you know, they are too powerful. They are very powerful. And we don't have the strength for them. Right? Look at the prayer of Esa. Es it's a reality is around him. Real reality, real armies are around him. He is found in the house of God. Not only he call upon God, he is now telling God, I am helpless Lord. How simple and how humble he is. And he says, listen God, that they are more powerful than us. Look at verse 11. Huh? He says to them, between the powerful and those who have no strength, so help us. Underline that score that verse. They are so powerful. All right, they are so powerful and we have no strength. So help us. The despondency. He knew God is hearing him. And so he came before the Lord. He prayed to God and says, Lord, I am helpless right now. My situation is hopeless. Right? Rather than we engage in fight, engage in argument, engage in everything. Friends, go in the quiet retreat. And seek the Lord and tell the Lord, I am helpless. I am the losing end. The world has come to an end in my life. Right. How many of you have seen the movie called The War Room? Have you seen the movie? Catch up with that movie. Huh? It's a family of black with two children. All right. What happened? The husband was working well. He bought a car, bought a house. All right. And then he began to have an affair with his secretary. And the wife came to know. You know, normally what a wife will do, huh? Wife, and room, broomstick will wait. Three. Right? All these things will, all army tactics will be waiting, confronting, fight, la. All right? Please go and watch this movie. All right? It's a beautiful movie. I think that one of the church can be showing. Yeah. Um, and so what happened, the, this wife, she had went into a closet, she had a lot of shoes and so forth in a small little room, mine is called store of life. She cleared them all up. She cleared them all up and then put all the things outside and kept the room bare. And she took sticker papers and stuff to write and prayed for her husband. And she put on this day and prayed for my husband. Lord, you have to touch him. And she was cool. Watch that movie, she was cool. He comes back home, she cooks him a good food, serves him. All right, and she did the wifely duty. She did all that. And then the car repossessed came, took away the car. All right, and then some of the possession was taken away. And yet she did not throw a tendrum. Look at that movie, it would be wonderful. And she followed what she did. And so she only went into that room and she prayed, and everything that she prayed, she put something in. All right, and put some. It was going on, the relationship was going on, and it was not troubling her. She went, she knew her marriage was in a hopeless situation. Okay, but what she did, she had a war room. We all need to have a war room in every aspect of our life. All right, take that war room, go to that war room, pray. All right, if you don't have a place in your big home, or you don't have a small home, set up a corner now. All right, and have that as your word. Write it and stick it up and say, Lord, I'm praying for this. Right, I'm praying for this. And you see, amazingly, amazingly, the true story, yeah? war room is the true story. Amazingly, that secretary was sacked from the office and he was left alone 
and he returned to his wife and she con and he confessed to his wife that he had an extramarital affair and they came back together again and the life again the marriage was again and she said it's because of my word i call upon my god i seek my god i look to my god i express how hopeless i am i cannot fight with my husband i cannot do anything i will do my duty but i know you are hearing me please all of you turn to jeremiah 33 and keep 33 was 3 in your bible at all time he says call upon me and i will answer you this is it whatever your situation could be in your office could be anywhere you are finding a situation you are finding it difficult to apprehend you are in a totally losing state like Asa have a war room Asa had a privilege of the Lord's house and he can be able to go to before the Lord and he says Lord we are so helpless we have no strength for that powerful army out there how simple and you know as I said it's not seeking men not seeking his own armies and you know his own, own generals and all of his warriors no he went to the living god right and then the third level of his prayer was this okay verse 11 look at it and he says lord lord our god we trust in you the third thing he said to the lord lord we trust in you a total surrendering to the lord a total not 50 percent my friend not 80 percent my friend it's 100 percent sending to the lord friends that is utmost faith a hundred percent surrendering to the lord lord we trust in you i salute you in the midst of all this pandemic all right you are here that is your utmost faith speaks about all right your faith will keep you well my friend as I mentioned last week on, on Psalms 91, yeah, the shield of faith, am I right? You have the shield of faith. No sickness can ever come near you. All right? All the snares and the trapper and the pestilence is all mentioned in 91 can never come close to you because you have the shield of faith. Look at some of us are fearful, not coming, but... They can go to shopper market, they can go to market, they can go to office, they can do it. Okay. Now I want to tell you something here, that some of us have a wondering. One of the, I think Dr. Chris will be able to tell us, in this COVID situation, your house must be well ventilated. Okay. So the church must be well ventilated. Okay. I'm going to give two technical. I've spoken to a technician about it and he gave me a clear answer. Those of you who are having split unit of aircon like that we're having a splitter, you have no problem. You know why? The, all the airs are sucked up from this building and it brings a fresh new cool air into the building. So it's ventilated, you understand? It is ventilated. Okay, so get this very clear. Those who are having split unit, a unit of aircon, nothing to worry. All right? This aircon will suck out all the air, ventilated air, hot air, and then it goes up through the compressor and brings in fresh, cool, new air into the building. Unlike in the shopping centers. In the shopping centers, it is known as a centralized air condition. In the centralized air condition, they will, one corner, they will have the turbine, which is run by water with electricity supply. And only the cool air circulates within the large area of building. You understand? That is unhealthy. Because the ventilations are in the basement where they have the vent fans. Alright? This is all the technical terms. Huh? So they will tell you in a large shopping center, do not spend much time. Alright? And if you have a unit, split unit aircon, you have no issues at all. Right? So some people say church uh, is not ventilated la. I laugh at them. You have no much technical knowledge about your split unit aircon. 
friends, if this church was a centralized air condition, I will not start a church. I will not have a service. Okay? Because we had split un unit of air condition, got the advice of the, the technicals, technicians, we were able to go. That's faith. It's faith. So let's understand this, my friend, that we totally giving ourselves to God. And here, Asa, he surrendered himself to the Lord. He says, Lord, I'm helpless. And that is faith, my friend. Like the war room. That woman, Lord, I'm just giving it to you. I surrender myself to you. I surrender this issue to you. And she was cool. There was no emotion in her when she was about the husband. Huh? You know, sometimes when we can sound some big ram, am I right? She was cool. She knew what was doing was wrong, but she was cool. What a wonderful virtue this woman had because she knew the word of God well. And she had faith. That's the beauty, yeah? The faith is what is going to set you free. If your faith is not strong, my friend, nothing is going to work. All right? So we see the three virtues and the three level of prayer that Asa went. Firstly, he's called unto God. He reached out to God. All right? And then he did not want to look at anybody, but rather to God. Secondly, he expressed his helplessness. All right? He knew he's outbeaten. He knew he was defeated. He knew there's nothing he's going to do. So he went and told, Lord, I'm helpless. Help us. We are no longer at the strength, but they are powerful. Then, thirdly, he surrendered everything to God. He trusted in God. That's important, my friend, these three virtues. Now, because of these three virtues, God listened to this man of righteousness. God listened to this man's faith. God listened to this man's prayer. It's important to realize this. And so God began to act because of his simplicity of his prayer, of his total surrendering to him. So we see now, we got time now to see the first blessings. Okay? Now let's look at the first blessings that he received when he first had surrendered himself, called upon God, and he trusted God. God began to react. The first blessings in verse 12. Look at verse 12. So the Lord rooted the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. This, uh, this is the first blessing. Okay? Look at the word very clearly here. Yeah? The Lord routed the Ethiopians, not Asa or his army. Keep this in mind. It was the Lord's army came down from heaven, probably thousands of, of, of angels, all right, led by the archangel Michael, and he routed the entire million men. All right, it was not Asa. Asa did not mobilize his army. Right, we see what a blessings here. Uh, what a blessings here. His simplicity and God did the battle for him. You don't have to do the battle. You know, in comparison, the Lord did battle for him. And, not, and God did not call Asa. Asa, I want you to do this strategy. Alright? I want you to do this strategy so that you will win the war. Alright? Unlike if you turn to Joshua chapter 6. I want you to know this. Huh? There are two differences here. All right, in Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites were told to go and conquer Jericho. But look, God didn't say, you stand and call upon me, cry before me, and then I will bring down the wall. No, the Lord gave a strategy to them. What is the strategy? Let's read from verse 1. It was 5. 1 to 5. Now Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, with its king and the valiant warriors. You shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You shall do so for six days. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. Then, on the seventh day, you shall march around the city 
seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets. It shall be then when they make a long blast with the ram horns, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up every man straight at it. Okay, we see the comparison here. Here God was telling Joshua, how I want you to go and get possess Jericho. Seven days, seven walk. Uh, we each day one round. On the seventh day, walk seven times. On the seventh day, after the seventh time, blow your trumpet, and you will see the wall fell flat. This was the Lord, the same Lord that Asa was calling. God was giving him a strategy. But in King Asa, when he went to the Lord's temple to pray, God did not say, listen, Asa, I want you to do this, 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 this. Like in Joshua. The Lord said, the battle is mine. The battle is mine. Now, the simplicity of prayer that he prayed. King Asa did not mobilize his army at all. He left the three level of prayer with God in his war room and the rest is faith in him. This is faith, my friend. Simply his faith is plain. Alright, King Asa had no second opinion. You know that time you go to doctors and the doctor diagnoses you and we normally want the second opinion, alright? We go to the third opinion. But King Asa has no luxury of getting a second opinion. All right, but what he did, what was simple he did, he humbled before the Lord God. Look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 9. Let's read that. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. James. The book of James. Yeah. yeah, James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will <coughs> exalt you. That's the word. James 4 10. Huh? You can underscore the word he said. Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. He will exalt you up. Amen. And that's what he said it. He humbled before the Lord. Come what may. That was his attitude. Eh? Come what may. I will surrender myself to God. If I'm defeated, I'm defeated. Alright, but I'm going to my God. He knew he's got a God on his side. And we read in Second Chronicles, eh? in verse 13. Uh, what we read here, sorry, verse 12. The Lord routed the entire Ethiopians before Asa and Judah. And they fled. They fled. Having little men with spears and shield. Whereas the Ethiopians having chariots, million men, and they were fleeing. Can you see how one who comes against you will flee in seven ways? Remember that. Whoever comes against you will flee in seven ways, my friend. When you humble yourself, when you call upon God in a time of crisis in prayer, remember, every prayer of yours will shatter the devil. Every time that you pray, do you know that devil shatters? Okay, look at James chapter 4 again. Look at James chapter 4 and look at verse 7. Something therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from Submit you. Submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Man. Oh, you are so powerful, you know that. You are one powerful being that you are that he will flee from you completely. He will flee from you. The devil will flee from you, huh? not we from the devil. Okay, many of us flee from the devil. Huh? Okay. But the devil here, the Lord says here, you humble yourself, all right, and submit yourself to me, and then say, he will flee from you. Because one in you is greater than the one in the world. Remember that. Okay, remember that always. 
you have Christ in you. And so you are greater. And since you are a greater person, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear, my friend. I mean, you know, when we have this life battle, you know, we have a life battle, whatever it may be. It could be your sickness, life crisis, problems in relation. It could be anything that you are having. You know, you have all these problems that whatever that it comes in, job insecurity, right? In this coming, in the lockdown that we were, you know, people's salaries were cut, right? Put pressure in the family, am I right? Uh, some people were salaries were cut by 10%, some were 50%, Air Asia was 75%, okay? And getting a 25% salary was no joke, okay? And so you see, it put pressure in the family. And especially among Christian families, what we do, we fight. Right? We fight. Rather than living with what you have, but we fight. We can't come up and sharing is caring. Sharing is caring, my friend. With the little that you have, be sharing. You know, when I was in the theological college, you know, we used to have games in the evening. So one day we had games, we all were, you know, sticky and tricky, and in that evening we have, a, we, every night we have a worship service, huh? and so we had to be, and so in my room we had four fellas, okay, including me, and so we all, we all were playing games, and then we came back in the evening to share shower and get ready, all right, for the evening service, and we found each other had no soap, all right. So one of our brother, a Chinese brother, he had one bar of soap. So what he did, hey, I have a bar. So what we did, he did was he cut the bar into four and he gave it to us. Okay. So we shared. One bar was cut into, you look how small piece like that. But we had able to have a shower and we were able to go for the service, enjoyed the service, did the service, right, and we gave our dinner. Caring is sharing and sharing is caring. When you have little less, someone else in the family could come and help you to care. This is important, my friend. This is Christian virtue. If you are a Christian, sharing is caring. Caring is sharing. If you say, no, 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 your problem, your problem, my problem, my problem, then that's it. You will have a Vietnam house. Okay. So Christians, we need to grow out of it in your, in your Christian life. You know, in the, and, and especially this pandemic, as I told you. In this, during this pandemic time, do you know the numbers of domestic violence has increased? Do you know? How many of the wives have walked away back to their homes? How many husbands have walked away? Is this Christians? A shame. If you ask me about a non-Christian, all right, I would say, okay, they, they, they don't have wisdom. They don't have faith. Okay? But here, a Christian, walks away to the mother's house, walks away to the father's house. You call that a Christian? I, I, I am finding amused. What is our faith then? People who laugh at us, they call them the Christian and they go to church. Huh? Look, what have gone back home? Because of insecurity. Friends, let us learn to live with little what you have. If you have only magami, share the magami together and eat and that's a day for you. That's the life that we have to lead. Not seeking the luxury, it should be maintained. We need to adjust ourselves. We need to adjust our life together. And so today you see domestic violence have increased tremendously. Sad, isn't it? All right, because of pressure, husband's salary is low, the wife demands. All right, and so quarrels begins. See up the statistic. Domestic violence has got up 90% high in Malaysia in the last four months, which are recorded. This domestic violence are all gone to police cases, huh? has been gone to police because man handling and so forth. But there are so many are not reported to the police. Do you know that? Dr. Chris Yolu is nodding his head. Because they don't, they, they don't want to report to the police. They want to find an easy way out. Friends, let me tell you this. From this pulpit as your shepherd. Hope this will not happen to your family. And I wish not to see this in your family. Alright, we are Christians. We have faith in the Lord Jesus. 
If not, our faith is in vain. It's laughable people are laughing at us. So make sure, however tough it is in our Christian life, let's hold together. United, we stand. We stand. United, we stand. Divided, we fall. We die alone. All right, that's it. So in our Christian life, and so in this time of pandemic, we need to get together. We need to get together and say, okay, all right. Let me just I'm digressing a little bit because this is a serious issues in Christian home today. I've come across some people have called me. They cry to me and say, Pastor, my husband is doing this. So when I question, I, when I go in detail with them, he has lost his income. So of course he can't able to pay some of the bills. So why both of you sit down and discuss? So I had to get involved in it. All right. And this is it, my friend. So when we sat down and discuss a friend, they found there's some sense in there. Because we started in prayer. We handed it to the Lord. We had a hopeless situation, Lord. You have to lead us. This is how it worked. This is how they called upon the right people. Okay. And I'm glad this family, they did not go back to his mother's house or to her father's house. All right? They called upon the right person. So that the family unit stays together. And so the family could able to be a testimony to the community that they live in. So friends, however we are going through this pandemic time, all together, understanding is so important. Perseverance is so important. Tolerance is very important in this pandemic time. Okay? So let's hold together in this time of time and no call upon God. Our God is a God who will answer our prayer, my friend. Amen. You will never see how the Lord mysteriously works. You never know how God is works so wonderfully, you know. And God is good. I give you a testimony. We have a few families in Kuala Selangor that we are unable to meet, and they were calling me and says, Pastor, we have no food for. And the, the adult tells me that I can take it, but not kids, children. And here we don't have the resources, and I know all the resources have been exhausted. We don't know how to support them. We took it to the Lord in prayer. We cried unto God and said, God, these are families, our sincere families, they require food. But we are helpless. We don't have the resources. We can't buy a packet of 10 kg rice and send them to them. We don't have the money. We don't have the basic ingredients to give them to these four families. Lord, look to you. We want your support. We come to you, Lord. We are helpless, just like Asa's prayer. It was about two hours later, I got a call. One family says, Pastor, thank you for sending all this stuff. I said, what? Sending you this stuff? Yes, there's one man came by and they gave us all the necessity for our next four families, Pastor. So I'm so thankful to you. I, and I just do not know, I'm not going to take the credit for myself. I give credit to my God. He fed them. By what? I call upon God. He heard my prayer. And that's his so friends, we need, in the time of insecurity, in this kind of time, we call upon God. We come to God. You know, I told this family, have you ever sat down and prayed together when you had an argument about finances? When you had differences in your life? Did you both sit down and pray? If you only sat down and held hands together and prayed, you would not have called faster. God would have dealt with you. And this is it. They're doing very well now. Thank God for that. Okay. And so we see how God can work in a situation like now we are facing. Realistically, my friend, pandemic is bad. It's everywhere. And let me tell you this, COVID is not going to disappear. It's going to be here. It is as how we're going to manage the COVID. Okay? We cannot keep, keep on on isolation. We cannot live on isolation. We have to get out to work. All right, as long as we follow SOPs, that's reality. We have to go out, have to work, no choice. If not, there will be more trouble times and not troubling the families and a lot of pressure built on the families. And I'm glad the government is opening a lot of, of the economy sectors. All right? So it is us how we manage it. Okay, so having said that, my friend, 
We need to come before God when you find an area of insecurity. All right? Or if some kind of failure that you are facing, you are trying on your own strength, your despondency, you are helpless. Friends, moments like that, be like Asa. Surrender to the Lord. Lord, I commit to you. I commit it to you, Lord. And let me so. I'll continue on next week. Right? There's not areas more to discuss. Right? These are relevant things for our daily life and our life. For our family life. Remember, we all are Christians. We carry the name of Christ in our life. Amen. We're Christ and then Christian. Right? So we are carrying the cross in our life and we need to show a right testimony. Right? Next week I'll continue with this. Alright, a few points here, then we'll see the second lessons. Let us pray.